Bin Bin Ahmad Zahidin. Yes, I have a Nuru. So long name short, uh, you can just call me Hakim. Um, because to be honest, I'm not um, too accustomed with um, the title Mr. J um, or even Abang. Okay, so um, in this Zoom room, we are all friends and we are learning from each other. So uh, you, you can call me Hakim Ali. So I'm 32 years old. Pretty much uh, a lot, lot, lot older than you. <laughs> and um, my experience in uh, public relations um, this year would uh, conclude of nine years. Nine years. Um, I started, yes, nine, nine years. I started my career as a uh, public relations executive mm -hmm. in 2014. Mm -hmm. um, that was when I started with um, Media Prima, TV networks especially. So, uh, TV networks, it consists of the, all four channels in Media Prima, TV3, uh, and TV7, 8TV, and TV9. Uh, okay, then after that, uh, I spent, uh, I think, around five months after that in MPOCC. It's an NGO, um, particularly, um, it's called uh, Malaysian Palm Oil Certification Council. Mm -hmm. So there, uh, well, the main business there is about uh, certifying oil palms, um, plantations. So everything uh, to do with oil palms, they will get the certificate from MPOCC. Um, and um, in the past two years, I started my new journey uh, in Etika Insurance and uh, Takapu. So you see the logo there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> You're representing <laughs> I'm Etika. not wearing the, the Etika logo here, so I'm, I'm going there. <laughs> yeah. okay. okay, so now that we have known a little bit about you, sir. So before we start with the interview, I want to ask, how is your work today? Is it busy? Very is busy. It? So <laughs> today is very busy. So I apologize uh, for replying your text. Very, right. very late, Kai, because you texted me around 10... 16 in the morning and I reply yeah. to you at 7 p.m. No, it's fine. It's, it's all fine. It's all fine. It's all, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so shall we start with the 10 yes. questions? Are you ready, sir? Yes. Okay, Inshallah. so one of our early topics at this semester uh, that we are learning in public relations is ethics. So for the first question, let's come into ethical practices. My first okay. question would be, uh, Hakim, how do you ensure that ethical considerations are integrated, assimilated into your public relations strategies and campaigns? Okay, thank you. All right, so um, okay, so ethics, eh? Uh, okay, so uh, the way a public relations um, executive or officer uh, implement ethics uh, in our works is actually actually because as a PR, uh, we are the main communicator of the um, company. So some public relations will work um, particularly only external communication and some public relations work internally. So that means um, there are not really two types of public relations. There are many types of public relations. Um, some public relations are only writers. Some public relations are only um, doing uh, internal announcements. Some public relations are only doing external communications that includes of um, press releases, media engagement, okay, and some public relations uh, do all of it, okay. So, uh, in terms of ethics, it is um, mandatory, I wouldn't say compulsory, it is mandatory uh, to be ethical in, in our work because as a true communicator of the company, uh, we have to always communicate uh, truly or I would say truthfully, okay. So it has to be transparent, okay? So let's say if you have really a message that we have to cascade down from the management, for example, um, the company's uh, financial report, okay? Mm -hmm. So uh, from the CFO, the chief financial officer, um, mm -hmm. he or she might want to uh, tell the employees that the company is doing good, okay? It's doing well, the performance is doing well. Mm -hmm. So, um, we have to get as many information as possible from the CFO team and we have to communicate it as it is. So we cannot hide any any um, information that was supposed to cascade down from the CFO. 
So for example, um, right now it's in, we are in the month of December. So of course, the hot topic of, the, of all employees mm-hmm. uh, would be how much bonus would we get next year? Oh, uh, that's early. Yes, yes because ah. um, it depends on uh, which company. Um, they are financial... Uh, what do you call it? Uh, the the, the yearly uh, financial um, results come out. So uh, some company, uh, the cutoff date would be in November, some in December, some even in April. So mm-hmm. it depends on the company. So in Ethica, um, our cutoff uh, financial results would be in uh, November. So mm-hmm. um, it would prorate a bit uh, for December, and they will calculate the bonus that will release in around. February or March. Uh, so that means this is the right time for employees to ask how much would we get for bonus. Uh, so as a PR, um, as a PR, uh, we cannot hide any information. For example, of course, we know that uh, employees would um, ask how much, uh, how much bonuses uh, they will get. But uh, for the sake of our CFO, for example, we would we cannot hide. Um, we cannot hide any uh, information. For example, uh, we just put the financial results uh, as an A, B, C, and then D is the uh, bonus part, but we hide that. We cannot do that. So being ethical, it means that we have to communicate trans- transparently. Uh, okay, so uh, that is one example. There are a lot of examples which would take me hours because I am a very talkative person. So. I cannot elaborate all, <laughs> otherwise you would have to uh, spend a lecture time with me. Yeah, yeah I see, I see. Yeah. So I see, so uh, in terms of ethical practices, you must be truthful in PR uh, area. But I have another follow-up question. What happens if someone, yes. let's say, doesn't matter, an intern or a professional or a new guy, he breaks mm-hmm. this, he, he doesn't follow the ethical practices, what do you think will happen to uh, an organization? Uh, okay. All right, so that, that depends on where the message is going to. Okay, so for example, if let's say, well, usually uh, we don't entrust um, intern to uh, send out a communication message or anything um, to the external party. So we won't let, um, we won't let, uh, what do you call it, interns to communicate to the media uh, because, because of this error. For example, if uh, uh, with the lack of uh, experience they have, they might have some possibly some typos, mm-hmm. or um, maybe um, they have a lack of information. So yeah. uh, because of that, there's a there will be some discrepancies of data. They would mm-hmm. be um, misjudged of words, probably the way they put uh, the sentences. Mm-hmm. So. Um, that would cause some uh, reputation um, damage for the company. So because of that, uh, I mean, to avoid that, uh, mm-hmm. to avoid that, we would, uh, we won't let them to handle external parties. Uh, so, but then let's say if it happens, the, your question was if it happens, right? Yes. So normally, uh, we would uh, give them a warning, um, and then the warning would always come with um, always cross check with your superior. Uh, with your senior, okay, um, the message that you want to um, communicate. So um, that's compulsory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then let's say if um, let's say if the message is already out and damage is done, so then um, there's not much we can do but to apologize to the um, third party, to the third party, and we would correct with the correct uh, messaging. Ah, okay, I see. Yeah, so, so, so that is what we call actually uh, direct crisis um, management. Direct so crisis because, uh, we, because we can, uh, what you call it, uh, manage it uh, in a small scale. So we could just apologize and what we meant was, ah, like that. Ah, so it's like, okay. Oh, I'm sorry that we have a miscommunication. What we meant was, da 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 da. But uh, I think um, uh, I have a question. Uh, if mm-hmm. we want to apologize to our customers, is uh, do we have to actually ask for the higher management first or we just say we are apologize for this that happened? Okay, um, that we have, we must tell our um, line manager first. 
uh, or our superiors first. Okay, so that they know Some that we are taking action. Mm. Okay, this is uh, another ethical um, moment here. Okay, so to be ethical in PR, we must have the communications aligned. Okay, uh, so uh, because let's say the customer is here and we are in the, the middle person here. So mm -hmm. yes. I know we tend to just apologize to the customer. Hey guys, so sorry, you know what? <laughs> but, <Yeah. laughs> well, it's a good practice to be transparent, but yeah. um, yes. also being transparent means that you must tell your superior that, uh, hey, Mr. or Mrs. this, 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 um, I have, I made a mistake and mm -hmm. I wanted to apologize to this customer. Uh, May I do so? Okay, then your superior will ask you, uh, okay, what kind of messaging that you wanted to deliver? Then you uh, say, okay, I have this drafted. Is it okay? Then, uh, if your uh, manager said yes, okay, Hakim. then okay, Hakim. you can proceed. Okay, I see. So, thank you, Hakim. So, that explains my questions lah. Alright, so I no think um, that uh, that's all for Kaizurin's questions about ethical uh, ethics. And next, we will move on to the second questions uh, by Miss uh, Afsa. Okay. Okay. Hi, Miss Hakim. So yeah, I Hakim is fine, but it's okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. I have a question regarding the daily tasks and responsibilities of PR professionals. So, okay. what are the key daily tasks and responsibilities that you handle as a PR professional? Okay. Okay. Daily tasks. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so, um, I think this would be a rather long answer because, um, as you know that, uh, my first career started in TV3, okay, in Media Prima, and that is the entertainment industry, the media industry, and then when I moved to NGO, that is the, uh, what do you call it? The government, the, the government the company, company. okay, and then now I'm with Etika, that is the financial industry, right, so all three industries have different tasks, okay, and it ranges, it ranges a lot, so for example, um, when we, uh, when we, when I was with TV3, my daily task would be um, to monitor the news, um, monitor the news so that uh, I wouldn't miss any news, or there is there any conspiracy or, or any, you know, conspiracy with the government or anything, or and then also any gossip regarding the celebrities that I am taking care of. Um, not am, was, <laughs> I was uh, 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 taking care of, and then um, I would say, other than that, is writing press releases, writing speech text. So, press release, speech text are all the same throughout. Uh, throughout the industry, any industry you would do the same. So, um, writing is always not really. I wouldn't say writing is number one, but that's pretty much uh, what we do. Uh, okay. Uh, so any any kinds of writing, spec uh, specialist, speech text, uh, press release, um, fact sheets, um, preparing documents for uh, media. Yeah. Um, then I would say what else. What are we right? Mm -hmm. Internal yeah, announcement. Yeah, um, if you are lucky, if you are um, in touch with, in, I mean, in the department of uh, financial PR, so mm -hmm. that is, that includes of uh, um, investor relations, for example, oh. investor relations. You would write more about uh, financial results, um, about annual reports. Uh, mm -hmm. So those are the things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, it does give me like a lot of new information that you know we never had before. Really? Yeah. How long have you guys been studying PR? Okay. How long have you guys been studying PR? Just this semester. Just this semester. Around yeah. eight weeks. Ten weeks? Eight. Yeah, around eight, eight, eight weeks. Eight weeks, eight weeks so yeah. far. Yeah, in but weeks, so that means two months. Yeah, mm -hmm. but including the previous sem, we also learn about public relations, but indirectly. For example, we learn mm -hmm. about corporate communications, uh, negotiation communication. So um, I think that's a part of PR, but it's separated into yeah. subjects. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. okay. So I have one more question. Okay. It's regarding sure. public relations campaigns. So how do you measure the success and effectiveness of a public relations campaign 
And what metrics do you primarily focus on? Okay, metrics. Okay, okay. so um, okay, so campaigns. Um, uh, all right. So I hope <laughs> that uh you are familiar with um public relations value or we call it PRV or have you heard of advertising no. value not yet not mm -hmm. yet no, I think for me no but advertising uh, okay. I, I have heard before yes AVE okay so um for me uh, throughout my experience I uh how do you call it I evaluate uh the effectiveness of the campaign via two methods <laughs> okay so one of course, oh, it's okay. via, we have uh, an annual brand survey. That is when we um, would carry on a survey uh, to the whole Malaysia to see where is the strength of the brand, uh, of the company. Okay? So uh, it consists of lots of questions. So they would answer it um, truthfully. And uh, we would know how strong is our brand. So for example, in the insurance and tobacco industry, we would see where is Ethica, where is AIA, where is Prudential, where is Alliance, where is uh, Great Eastern, and so forth. Okay, so that is one method. So then, uh, let's say for the whole year, we did a lot of PR initiatives, PR campaigns, for example, for our um, CSR initiatives, okay, corporate social responsibility. We have, um, uh, for each of the initiatives, we have a public relations um, initiative as well. So we write press releases, we do um, media media kits. So uh, when we issue the media kits to the media, mm -hmm. are the media, uh, did the media pick up the story or not? So oh. that is when method number two comes in. Okay, method number two is when we will um, tabulate um, the monthly PRV report. Okay, PRV again is public relations value. Okay, so how do we calculate this? Roughly, it is actually for each um, page uh, a media write about our um, campaign or our program, um, there is a value into it. So, for example, the value is like it, it is commonly, um, uh, how do you say it, um, compared with the advertising value. Okay, so for example, one page in Berita Harian would cost you 60,000 ringgit, mm -hmm. for example. Okay, one page. Okay, um, one page full color would cost you know, 60,000 ringgit um, for one insertion. So one time of advertisement in Berita Harian, full page, full color would cost you 60,000 ringgit. Okay. 60,000? So yeah. So in compare with PRV, usually PRV is three times more than the uh, AVE. So from the 60,000, uh, one page would, uh, would give us 180,000 ringgit of PRV. Ooh. Okay, oh. so that is how we collect. So let's say one page is 180, and we have how many uh, other articles for that um, campaign or program? Okay, so uh, when we tabulate all those, we will have the total PRV for the month. Uh, so that is how we evaluate uh, our campaign or initiatives or program uh, is successful or not. So it's easy, it's a no brainer that. Um, if, yes. let's say, a program does not have a PRV, mm -hmm. it's a weak campaign. Uh, so that's how you evaluate that. <clears throat> yeah. And also PRV is the metric. Lah. Uh, just now you asked about the metric. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is that all, Ms. Afza? Or do you have any more okay. questions? Yeah, I answer your question. Yes, that's very... No, I know um, <laughs> there are lots of jargons and a lot of, yeah. um, uh, what you call it, terms. Um, new terms for you yeah. guys, but you will learn it. Yeah. Eventually, yes. Yes, it's, eventually. It's like, it's interesting to to hear the words, the terms that we learned and it's like being used here. Yes. Yeah, thank you for answering my questions. No problem. Okay, so that's all from Ms. Afza. So we move on to the fourth question, which is related to media relations. So Shahid, can you ask Hakim about your question? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, clearly. So I will ask about uh, media relations. Okay. And uh, as we all learn in the class, uh, public relations plays a crucial role in uh, crisis communication. So, 
can you share with us your successful experience of managing a media crisis and the strategies you employed to handle it since you uh, has experience in the media entertainment in the entertainment industry um, that's funny that you have to pick the entertainment industry because that is the <laughs> only industry that i have crisis <laughs> yeah because i've been to three uh, industries uh, none in the government sector and none in etika yet inshallah tak ada okay, but uh, in tv3 i have a lot of crisis but then one of the um, most memorable crisis that i i would say is actually um, during my final year in um, tv3 i think that was in 22 and he mm -hmm. more or less give or take 2020 or 2021 it is it was during covid okay so um well i i suppose that you are familiar with the um singing competition anugrah juara lagu uh -huh, yes yes very yes. familiar yes. Uh, all right because right now they are in the season of semi final music music <laughs> yes, yes. yeah if you watch tv but that is it's Elite fine movie. if you don't watch tv <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. okay so um It is it is that very program that gave me that crisis. Uh, give me, well, I thankfully I I I have the experience of uh, experience with the crisis. Um, so it happened in 2020 or 2021, give or take. I think it's 2020. So uh, what happened was um, during okay, semi final music music. There are three days. Okay, mm -hmm. there will always be three days: the week one, week two, and week three. Where week three they will announce the 12 finalists to AGL, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so this crisis happened on week three, <laughs> on day yeah. three. So yeah. um, it was okay. So we were supposed to go live at 9 p.m. after Bulletin Utama uh, for the day three of semi-final music music. So we had our rehearsals with the celebrities um, during the day, um, starting 11 a.m. or 10 a.m. until 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 live. Okay, so. <clears throat> So what happened was um, after a few hours of uh, rehearsals, um, only at four, um, Alif Sata. Uh, that was when uh, that was the year when Alif Sata, um, what you call it, uh, compete in AGL. Mm -hmm. So it, it was Alif Sata and the locals. So uh, Alif Sata uh, did his um, rehearsal and he felt unwell. Okay. So since you know it's all about COVID, so yeah, he got yeah. COVID at 4:30 p.m. Okay, <laughs> at 4:30 p.m. and because of that, because he spent the whole day with the production team, the um, the other celebrities, so everyone has to get tested. And that time was when there were no test kits yet, so we have to go PCR 150 ringgit, 150 ringgit, 150 uh, ringgit yes, yes. Uh, per PCR. So um, after after everyone uh, did their PCR, um, it was actually around 40%. Um, 40% of uh, the crew members and also celebrities were infected by COVID-19. But not because of him, probably. Oh, by the way, uh, I'm connecting another backup account uh, because my earbuds is getting um, low battery. All right. Okay, sure. Okay, right. So, <clears throat> um, so at 4.30, he, um, he, he did his, um, test, his, his PCR, PCR test. So... Uh, Only at 4.30, he notified the uh, production team and the production team told us that we have to cancel semi-final music, music day three um, that day, that night, mm -hmm. for two weeks because some of them has to go quarantine. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, and then um, since our next new slot was uh, Bulletin Utama from 8 to 9, mm -hmm. and so we have to submit the uh messaging to the public before bulletin utama starts oh. so that is at 6 p.m so from 4 30 p.m to 6 p.m and on a sunday i have to work my foot off <laughs> okay uh, okay work my foot off um to explain to the public why semi-final music music has to cancel that day and it will be postponed until further notice which of course um we will we were given two weeks um what do you call it quarantine period so uh minimum we would uh, postpone the the program for two weeks and uh it could extend to one month so that is when 
Um, the semi-final music music only happened on uh, I think early January, and uh, AJL was in February. Yeah, oh, so it was the only year that AJL was rescheduled later. Uh, yeah, so um, during that crunch time between 4:30 to 6 p.m., um, it was really crucial that I must have all the info related to this crisis. I have, I must have the uh, the most uh, important one is uh, an apologetic letter, not letter, announcement or quote. We call it quote from mm-hmm. Ali Sata. Mm-hmm. And um, also an apologetic uh, announcement from the executive producer, and also from the CEO. Uh, so uh, then, if it's necessary, we would have to, which it was. Uh, I have to bring the Rutin Utama people, reporters, to mm-hmm. our CEO to interview a CEO. So our CEO's messaging was broadcasted through uh, Rutin Utama. Uh, that time, it was around 8:30 p.m. Uh, it was broadcasted. Um, yeah. So during crisis, it, it's always not uh, pretty. We have to work really, really fast. If we are, if we already work fast, we have to work triple fast. Uh, so be ready. If you want to be a PR, you have to be ready with crisis. Always. Run from it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Shahi. Sorry, it took a long explanation, but yeah, that that's what happened. Yes, we understood, uh, sir. So uh, it must be really hard for you to be there in the situation. So well, uh, uh, only Allah knows uh, <laughs> how many times I banged my head uh, on the desk, <laughs> thinking of the right word, because uh, well, sometimes even though we write a lot, um, mm-hmm. there will be time where we have um, what you call it structures block. Um, mm-hmm. So even though if you were writing your assignments, your theses. Or whatever you're writing, you will have a uh, uh, writer's block or mental block. So that is when no ideas are pouring in. So yeah. you will have you be like, uh, oh what do I see? Uh, yeah, <laughs> like, uh, redo, uh, tawakal. I I have one more question for you. Okay, um, is it about crisis also? <laughs> uh, it's about um, media relations. Okay, so, I'm having a crisis right now. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you're having a crisis. So in today's uh, digital age, uh, okay. how do you integrate uh, digital media strategies into your public relation campaigns for maximum reach and impact? Okay, all right. So this one, um, I think it depends on um, the company as well. Um, for example, I think I worked more with um, the digital team uh, in Etika rather than um, TV3 because TV3 uh, they have their own um, digital team and they would brainstorm their ideas. They would brainstorm their camp- their own campaign. Okay, so uh, only in Etika sometimes we would have uh, we would try to have a a team. Uh, we call it digital team. So digital digital team. Would um, be in charge of the social media um, accounts of Etika, and um, they would brainstorm ways for increased talkability of the brand um, amongst the netizens, uh, amongst the public, lah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So um, as a PR, we don't normally um, create any um, digital uh, what do you call it digital content. Yeah, this is the content uh, for the company because I think most of the company right now, especially big companies, they have a digital team. So um, I think in the scope of PR, we would call it a social media executive, lah. Uh, so um, they must know the basics of um, public relations, how to maintain good reputation with the customers, with the stakeholders, and all. So basically, it is what PR are doing, but uh, they don't do press releases. They they just uh, curate um, digital content and possibly um, how do you say it uh, engage with um, influencers, um, celebrities. So that's their job. I have a little bit question. Uh, okay. So our social media marketing and content marketing, uh, are they are they really the strategies for uh, digital media? 
Uh, yes, actually, yes. Um, well, okay. It depends on how uh, do you um, put meaning into marketing. Okay, but, but then basically, marketing is what is what we do to promote our brand. Okay, so um, it is what I explained just now. So um, that team would uh, well basically PR would. Uh, be part under marketing or sometimes marketing or under brand and comms. So um, the PR team and the digital team are two units, are, diff are two different units. Yeah, so PR and the digital team. So, but then both of them will work together to produce uh, the digital marketing um, campaign or content. Lah. Uh, believe uh, we all understand now about uh, media relations, if not all, some. So that's all from me. All right. Thank you, Shai. So we have finished with Shai's question regarding media relations and also uh, digital media. So now we'll move on to Miss Ainil about her question regarding stakeholder engagement. Okay. All right. So, hi, again. Hi, Ainil. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I have a question um, regarding stakeholder engagement. Okay. So my question is, how important is stakeholder feedback in shaping your communication strategies? And how do you manage and protect the organization's reputation? Okay. All right. So I think we, we pretty much covered about protecting the reputation just now um, when, we, when I explained about the crisis. So I will explain more about uh, how important the um, stakeholder management, um, the impact of stakeholders to um, our messaging. Okay. Okay, so um, stakeholders for, uh, for a PR um, is quite vast. So we have two kinds of stakeholders. We have internal and external stakeholders, okay? So our internal stakeholders, including our uh, management um, committee, so that is our um, head of department, our CEO, our chairman, our board of directors, okay? So those are internal, which means that um, we, we, can, we will receive some messaging from them. Uh, some directions from them, okay? So they will cascade down to us for us to communicate uh, to the public, which is the external stakeholders. So, um, possibly, well, not possibly, most of the time, um, whatever message that we convey to the public, it is um, message, messages from them, okay? So, um, of course, from the, well, it's really um, not difficult. It's, it's too vast to explain about the, hierarchy or organizational chart but basically we have a head we have a neck and we are the body oh no we don't we're not the body we are the hand <laughs> okay we are the hands of a body <clears throat> okay so because we are the first liner so um we would execute the message out or in circulate them and all so basically when the message uh moves from up to down okay to the body it is already filtered and somewhere in the body, for example, if we work for a company that has um, consumer goods, okay, or uh, services, for example, Takaful Insurance, um, the body would be um, the pro product marketing team. Okay, so product marketing team, they would have the whole um, plan of a product. For example, right now, we are uh, promoting uh, Ailindong. Okay, Ailindong is... Uh, it's a collaboration between KWSP and Ethica and also some other insurance company. Mm -hmm. So um, people can purchase um, insurance or takaful via KWSP. Okay? And they will just subtract. Uh, subtract like, very uh, yeah, mathematic. <laughs> they will uh, minus, not minus, deduct. Yes. Deduct, they will yes, deduct yes. Uh, the, the sum uh, from our account to KWSP. So we don't have to fork out our money to pay for the insurance and uh, takapu. So that's the product, okay? And yeah. how would they uh, convey the message to the public? To us, okay? So uh, with those curated messages and with the info, uh, specific info of the product, um, that is how we um, communicate to the public. And then whatever the public says in the social media would be picked up by the uh, dig digital team that I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. okay? So let's say if we have positive, uh, feedback, it will be presented to the board, mm -hmm. yeah, the management, so including CEOs and also the board uh, board of directors, 
Um, so that is how the six, the movement of uh, uh, sentiment uh, happens in the whole world, I guess. Yeah, so it is actually um, idea would come from the top, down, out, and then um, from the netizens or from the public mm -hmm. would cascade up back to the team. So probably uh, some probably some media um, would call the PR. So mm -hmm. we know we we have that info and we would cascade it back out. Uh, so if we have complaints from the public, it would go to the digital team and mm -hmm. it would cascade back up. So that is how the flow is. And that is how important it is. So basically, let's say um, if, if this idea from the top don't do well in the public, so the public would tell us that, hey, your product sucks. <laughs> okay, so then we would know, oh, okay, but we won't tell the management, guys, the, the, the product actually sucks. And then, no, but then we would screenshot, we would screenshot the comment and we just post it. So we won't say it, they would just read it. So that, that's how we know. Oh, okay, yes. All right, thank you. Okay, welcome. It's very important, right? The feedback from the stakeholders because it's like our communication. Yes. Yes, uh, for my part. Yeah, it, it, it is actually what uh, what keeps the business running. Um, it is what uh, it is how we manage the reputation of the brand of our brand to ensure that we have a good brand. Um, brand a uh, good brand help reputation. within the public yes oh, yeah. reputation yeah, yeah. Right. so that's all uh miss Aidil. so next we'll move on to um mr Sharul, uh regarding crisis communication again okay okay i hope you're ready <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, crisis now. yes yes all right uh, so my question is crisis about crisis communication, right? Okay, uh, so question is what steps do you take to prepare for potential crisis and how do you approach crisis communication to protect the organization uh, reputation? Okay, all right. So I, I suppose that every company has their own uh, SOP for crisis. Okay, so um, but then most of them are the same, which um, the SOP must come from um, the PR sentiment. For example, um, we would advise the um, management, uh, if we um, handle this crisis with care, what would happen to the company? And if we don't, what would happen to the company? Mm -hmm. okay? So from then, um, they would discuss with a lot of um, departments, including legal, okay, including legal compliance, right? Compliance, okay. So basically, legal is the one who would um, not really draft, but uh, they would check, uh, go through with um, any lawsuits, um, yeah, any lawsuits taken um, towards our company, and then compliance is actually uh, it's like a police, okay, it's mm -hmm. like the police. Uh, who would uh, ensure that uh, everyone in the company follows the rules that um, legal uh, uphold. Wow, that's a lot of uh, tough words. <laughs> yeah, so basically, uh, that is how it is. So, um, and then from then, from there, um, we would actually create an SOP, okay? Mm -hmm. An SOP of, for example, uh, crisis A happened. Does it involve B, uh, brand, uh, re reputation, reputation? Is it crisis of the building? Is it a crisis of the people? Is it a crisis of uh, IT security? Is it, uh, so there, there are lots of um, types of crisis here, okay? okay. Yeah. So um, and then from there, uh, it would link to another, uh, another point. For example, if it is IT, what would we do? Who do we um, contact? Yes, who do we contact? And if it is reputation, who do we contact? Who do we inform? Uh, so it's, it's a lot of process there, and um, it's really difficult to explain. But then, yeah, yeah uh, you get the idea that uh, it depends on what type of crisis, and it has its own its own um, SOP. Mm -hmm. And then from that SOP, we would keep it for future reference. So, uh, so that if it happens again in the future, we would know uh, which crisis to refer to. 
uh, because we did it before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for your very illuminating answer. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's it's okay because you know we actually learn a lot about crisis. I thought there's uh just some few kind of um crisis actually, but when you have said it like this, it's actually big and there's a lot of it is branches. Big. It, it is big because um the branch is is non-exhaustive. So um, for example, if you only have an SOP for IT security, what happens if the building was on fire? Would you implement the SOP for IT security? Would no, you no, call no, AMC, AMC? It's like, hey, AMC, AMC, bau naik to bakar lah. I don't think so. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. it's like that. Yeah. Uh, but then, um, I think from that explanation earlier, uh, it is self-explanatory that uh, we do not handle crisis alone. Mm-hmm. Okay, as the PR, yes, we would be the main, uh, not main now, because since it is already the new era of digital, digital era. So we have two main um, medium right now, okay? Two main media. Uh, mm-hmm. One is the traditional media, which is the PR, and two is the uh, social media. So whatever crisis we have, we have to uh, declare to the public that, guys, um, we are having a crisis right now. But we don't say that, okay? We just uh, like, yeah. um, there will be a temporary um, uh, IT breakdown, ke, uh, yeah, server mm-hmm. down, and those kind of things. We would say, mm. uh, we would report truthfully, but in a safe manner. So, uh, yeah, we, we don't say, we don't say to the public, uh, dear public, uh, our main server was exploded. Okay, exploded, <laughs> so we cannot process your claim. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Lah, macam tu. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of macam not appropriate to the customers, the stakeholders. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's all for the crisis communication question. So next okay. we'll move on to uh, Mr. Zuki Flee regarding okay. question about trends and emerging practices about the trends lah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Thank you, moderator. Uh, is my voice clear? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Regarding the trends and emerging practices, um, living in the digital era where technology has become one of the necessities in our life, uh, especially someone who works in the line of entertainment industry like you once was, you know, the trends and practices are like uh, one of the things that you need to follow through all the time. Uh, and based on my research, uh, for the trend in PR, there are a lot of interesting trends such as digital PR, influencer marketing, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and many more. So my question would be, how do you, as a PR practitioner, uh, stay updated with the latest industry trends and technologies? And how does this impact your strategies and approaches? Okay, cool. Thank you so much, Zul. Very long question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> another crisis for me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So, okay. I think uh, it is pr- pretty much established that um, for whatever happening in the social media or digital world, we have a separate team that we have a digital team. So they will take care of that. And uh, I would uh, mostly explain about the PR part and how we follow the trend and how we implement new trends, new technologies in our work. Okay. So uh, long story short, Chat GPT is your best friend. Yeah, <laughs> not me, not me. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. How so? I don't ever use that. We don't do that here. Yeah, we don't do that here. <laughs> we use uh, our brains. <laughs> okay, all right. So, you know what? Um, based on my own research as well, because um, there are some colleges and some universities that... I'm sorry for the smoke. Uh, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> Must really be windy yeah. there. Uh, yeah, it's very windy here, and I'm still sweating because of the crisis. <laughs> okay, so then, all right. So I was saying, uh, so we have a digital uh, team for that, and then so ChatGPT here. Uh, you must know how to um, give instruction to ChatGPT. Okay, the command. Okay, how we write the command is the key to using ChatGPT. All right. So uh, normally, uh, what I would do is, for example, if I have no idea how to write a press release, um, I would type in the chat GPT, please 
uh, write me a press release on the topic um, based on these details below. So I would put uh, a point form A, B, C, D, whatever, sampai habis. Okay, so point A is what um, the background of the issue, uh, B is the solution of the issue, C is how we um, counter the issue or how we solve the issue, and D is basically um, um, our management quotes. So for example, our CEO would say, uh, I'm very thankful of the collaboration between Etika and uh, this government body in uh, Bermudu because from this uh, initiative, Lots of issues were um, clarified, lots of um, societal problems, um, uh, what do you call it, solved, okay? So then that follows until the uh, the conclusion of the press release, okay? So that was in point form. And the chat GBT would draft the whole press release um, with, it, with, with, it, with its own words, with its own sentences. And but then you don't copy paste uh, entirely uh, mm -hmm. to make it your own press release because uh, they don't understand our jargon. Okay. Yeah. So nice. in, for example, in our entertainment industry, our jargons are different, and now I'm in the financial industry, the jargons are different. Yeah. Okay. So I have to uh, make it suitable um, to my um, current industry, and of course I have to edit it a bit. But at least I do not have to crack my head from scratch to draft a press release because I have uh, uh what you call it in BM is rangka karangan right so I have a I have that already so I can just uh, continue drafting uh, based on that uh, so I'm not teaching you how to use that for your assignment but please do <laughs> because it will save you a lot of time. For example, if you are not confident with confident, uh, uh, confident, uh, uh, that's a <laughs> Okay, all right. So if you're not confident with your English, you can always ask um, that GPT to check your English. For example, um, reword. Okay, the command would be reword or rephrase this sentences or this paragraph or this write-up with a formal, for example, formal language and serious tone. Then you just paste your paragraph there and it will check your grammar and whole thing and then you can use that in your assignment. Um, actually, it's a bit surprising for me. New information also, it says the PR practitioner also used ChatGPT for their work. <laughs> Yeah, so why not? It's, it's in the market <laughs> and it's free. So um, it actually improves our uh, efficiency in delivering our um, write-ups. For example, if you have a lot of, okay, uh, not all companies have a lot of PR. For example, when I was with TV3, we had 13, okay, one, three, one, three PR executive there. So that's a lot. And uh, we don't have a lot of, um, what do you call it? Uh, daily task because we have a, we are plenty okay mm -hmm. but in Etika we are only three uh, so if only three and then um, at the same month we have two products to launch and then we have one CSR initiative and then we have to uh, make an internal announcement uh, mm -hmm. for our daily task uh, so, uh, so we have to uh, work fast efficiently without compromising our quality Mm -hmm. So I mean, I believe that GPT is okay for rechecking or rephrasing our work. Not yes, uh, all of it, the okay, it as a whole. Yeah. Yes, okay. but then, but then, like so, I said, don't use it. Don't copy the copy. Uh, no, copy. Uh, <laughs> don't copy paste everything entirely. So uh, you cannot take um Chat GPT's work as your own. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so moving on, I have two questions actually. Uh, okay. This one is about measuring impact and return of investment, or short for ROI. So my question would be, how do you, as the PR practitioner, measure the ROI of your public relations efforts and demonstrate the value to the stakeholders? Okay, so I think this one, um, it is mostly similar with uh, how I measure campaign effectiveness. Just now, uh, if I'm not mistaken, from Afza? Afza, Tanya. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah, so um, the, the two methods just now that I mentioned, 
uh, one is the brand health service and one is the uh, PRV report, the public mm-hmm. relations value. Uh, the one yang 60,000, 180,000 to, ah, uh, yeah, yeah. those kind of things. Okay, so uh, that is actually how we uh, measure our, um, the effectiveness of our initiatives and how would we normally uh, report it to the management is uh, from our monthly uh, meetings with them. So we would update them that, uh, okay, for this month, for example, in December, what kind of initiatives that we did, uh, what CSR initiatives that we did. So then uh, did we issue a press release, a press kit to the media? Uh, and then if yes, do we have any coverage from that? Uh, do we have any uh, written articles uh, from the media that we can calculate as our PRV? So then we tabulate the PRV and it will it would say, uh, it will be self-explanatory that, okay, this particular uh, program uh, has this much PRV and yes, it is effective. Uh, so that is how we um, communicate with the management. I see. Uh, a little bit of follow-up questions. Okay. Uh, I did some research and it is stated that a company that has higher uh, return of investment uh, actually have the slow return in terms of, in term of the uh, investment itself and vice versa. Oh, sorry, can you repeat? Oh, sorry. Okay, so it is said that the company with higher return of investment actually has the slower return rate and vice versa, the lower ROI, uh, faster return rate. So could you clarify that? Okay. Return rate? What do you mean by return rate? <laughs> What's with the face? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No ah, ini lebih gampang. <laughs> okay, never mind. Uh, because I think um, because uh, that question is uh, quite uh, vague. Um, I do not quite understand that question. But uh, <laughs> what, what I would say that return on investment it is actually it, it is based on uh, how much do we spend for a program and how much do we get in return, right? Okay, so uh, in the terms of PR, um, like I mentioned earlier, um, one uh, page of Berita Harian would cost 60000 and um, the PRV would be three times, triple, okay, for 180. So the ROI is always positive, okay? But then um, there's a catch to it because PR don't, oh, okay, PR is all about free publicity, okay? Mm-hmm. It is how many how much publicity that we can get uh, for free. Okay, we don't play, we don't play, but we don't pay for uh, advertisement, we don't pay for editorial, most mm-hmm. of the time. Lah. But then, since after the COVID-19, uh, the industry has a bit shifted because businesses are impacted. Yes. So, uh, right now, no money, no talk. So, yes. they don't give, uh, they don't give uh, free publicity anymore. Well, not most of them, actually. Uh, so it all depends on our relationship with the media, whether they will um, carry our uh, news or not. Okay? If you don't pay, they won't cover it. Uh, it's easy as that. So um, that would actually impact on the ROI in the sense of, for example, our CSR event. Okay? So for our CSR event, we will always have um, a collaborative partner, uh, an NGO, uh, well, most of it NGO lah. Okay, so NGOs would have a cheaper rate for uh, media editorial. Okay, so for example, uh, for a corporate rate, they, um, they would give us 60000 per page, I mentioned earlier. But then NGO would only cost them 11000 So that means if we give them 60000 to the NGO, they could give us five uh, articles, page articles. And then all those five would times three to get our PRV. So the ROI would still be positive. Uh, that's a uh, tough question. Oh, another crisis. I'm <laughs> to <laughs> uh, for asking the question, even though I believe you come up with the question on your own. I believe I am losing some of my brain cells right now. So before uh, okay, for answering the question, and I believe that's all for my part. Okay. All right. Thank you, Zul. Okay. So last but not least, uh, I have one last question for you, Hakim. So okay. this one, this question is easy, and I think you can, you know, bring uh, you say gagureng, tapi not goreng lah, <laughs> just 
your tips okay so the question would be uh, what advice uh, would you give to someone like us to build a successful successful career in public relations because okay, we down, don't actually be nervous, okay. uh, what don't be nervous <laughs> calm down don't no, be nervous no don't be nervous uh, I, I, I stutter <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. So okay. What is your advice to us when we want to pursue our career as a PR practitioner? Okay. Um. So I would say um. Well, basically, I would take this opportunity to actually tell my younger self, if I have ever the chance mm -hmm. to tell my younger self, is that um. You will not regret being a PR. Okay, because. Um, being a PR is not um, like any other profession where um, everything is the same from the daily task and everything. There is always new things to look up to. Okay? Um, even though the, the program names are the same, but the process would be different. So this is like Miley Cyrus the Climb. Okay? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it is the process that matters. Okay? Yeah. Uh, and then uh, one thing that I would advise you to, if you want to be a PR, is that you have to uh, buck up with your um, language skills because mm -hmm. um, I do not just write in English. I have to translate it in uh, Bahasa as well. So um, I'm fluent in both uh, both language, languages. Um, okay, buck up with your, uh, what you call it, language study. Mm -hmm. And then you have to buck up with um, current issues. Current uh, issues. You must know a lot of current issues the trends, uh, mm -hmm. what's hot and what's not uh, in the industry, uh, in the news generally. And if your business is a direct impact with uh, politics, so you have to know about politics as well. Mm. And, um, oh yeah, the most importantly, uh, being a PR, you have you must have a thick skin, okay? What? Thick skin, thick, thick skin. skin, like... Uh, like Tia, yeah, you have thick skin and elastic heart. Ah, like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, because, okay, the reason why thick skin is because um, people would uh, always blame PR for communicating something that is wrong, okay? Mm -hmm. Because we are the frontliner. Frontliner mm -hmm. between the external and the internal, okay? Mm -hmm. Whatever mistake that we do, well, it might not be ours completely. It might be... Um, some people at the top or some people at the back uh, communicate with us the wrong information and we communicated that. So then, uh, of course, the, um, what do you call it? The customers would blame us first, okay? Would blame us, would blame the, uh, would, no, not, not blame us directly, but they would blame the brand uh, mm -hmm. and then from the brand and then the bosses would say, PR, kenapa you cakap macam ni? I tak pernah cakap macam ni. Macam tu. So they would always uh, scold us first. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, so that is why thick skin and elastic heart. <laughs> <laughs> okay lah, inshallah that your advices will be, you know, we will accept it as a pembakar semangat in the future. Oh, okay. one more thing, one more thing. Not uh, really one more thing. Okay. Well, there are lots of things. But okay, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> them are... tell, tell us, tell us. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Uh, some, uh, some of them are, okay. Um, another important thing is uh, to know the um, uh, noble title, noble title as in, um, uh, darjat kebesaran, okay, oh, ah. and then um, the uh, salutations that is most uh, uh, most important. Mm -hmm. For example, if I ask you, when do you use yang berusaha and yang ber <coughs> for bad? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, okay, no, no, Muhammad, Muhammad is for menteri, berbahagia. Berusaha and berbahagia. Ah, uh, Dato Sri, if I'm not mistaken. Wrong. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't know. I thought, I thought uh, it's like a, just a, a salutation for anyone. No. Okay. Oh. Uh, because yang berhormat is uh, YB. Okay. Yang mm. berhormat is for uh, Dato Sri, Menteri and all those. Okay. Um, those are yang berhormat. And then uh, for Perdana Menteri is yang amat berhormat. Okay, mm. <laughs> and then yang berbahagia and yang berusaha is the one that uh, keeps on um, being confused with. Okay, yang berusaha is for non-government officials. So, for example, uh, if my CEO was were to give a speech, uh, we have to use yang berusaha uh, CEO. Mm. Uh, so we cannot uh, give yang berbahagia CEO. Mm. Okay, um, unless we have 
uh, the head of department of any government official, mm-hmm. for example, uh, Kementerian uh, Keuangan, okay, mm-hmm. dengan yang berbahagia uh, Datuk ni 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 dia Datuk, mm. tapi sebab dia oh, sorry kembali pula, but because uh, he is um, the head of a government official, so, so we use yang berbahagia. Uh, so that is most important. That's the most important. Yes, because um, <coughs> uh, regardless if you are in uh, a non-government uh, sector or government sector, you will, there will always be um, government involved. There will always be political uh, parties involved. Okay? Mm-hmm. Um, because, well, I don't know why, but then, um, of course, the, the government controls um, all money um, in, in the country. Mm-hmm. So, whatever um, they want it as their ROI, they would mm-hmm. actually just jump into our um, program and probably they would hijack our program. So that happens. Oh. Uh, it always happens. It so happens. Because of that, <laughs> yeah, it always happens. So because of that, we would always, we must always know which one is yang berbahagia, yang berhormat, and yang amat berhormat, yang du- uh, duli yang maha mulia. Uh. Oh, so, okay. I see. Uh, so now we will have to, you know, to take this into consideration lah so when we talk to anyone yang ada jawatan so we can apply apply that okay yeah so i think that's all for the questions so kai do you have any uh, so for the closure before we mm. take a screenshot together okay i know that you have explained a lot of things about pr but do you have personally or whatever message do you have any kind of like message you want to give us as students here mm-hmm. Anything uh, about PR or maybe about life yes. that you want to share? That. Yep. Okay. Uh, I would say as a student, for, for, for you guys as a student, mm-hmm. um, mm, whatever you are learning in the university, you will not imp- apply everything uh, in real life. Okay. So I would say whatever I learned in university, it was just around 20 to 30%. Uh, in real life, it's, it's a different thing. So you will have to learn it um first hand okay so uh, every mistake that you do um in the industry it is actually your very own um uh, textbook uh, mm. okay so you have to learn from your mistakes so i've done a lot of mistakes that i've been a lot um in, in the past and um i wouldn't say that i'm good pr just yet um because uh, i still have lots to learn Mm-hmm. Um, especially, I'm still rather new in the financial industry, so uh, there are a lot of new people that I need to meet. There are a lot more jargons that I need to learn, and there are a lot more um, strategies, financial strategies that I need to learn as well. So, uh, as a PR, you cannot put your heads up high in the clouds. Um, you must always um, be rooted to the ground um, mm-hmm. to remind yourself that you are not great. Even though you have lots of um, accomplishment, you are not great. <laughs> okay, yes, there, yeah. there, there is always uh, things to learn. Uh, mm. Even though uh, if I were to be a lecturer, the upper uh, I would still be learning. Yes, yeah. it's true. So, I suppose the the key to learning, being a student, is humbleness and also the ability to learn to be to be taught by others, right? Yeah. yeah. So we really appreciate your time. We really appreciate your words that you have given us. We'll keep that in mind, keep that in heart, and I think that's all from uh, from us. Uh, okay. Thank you. All right. So I wish you all good luck with. Hey, this is your uh, which semester? Fifth semester. Fifth. Fifth. So after this, you'll be going on to internship. Intern will be on next semester, year. Semester eight. Semester eight. Semester eight. Yeah. Yes. Why not semester four? <laughs> okay, so can we take a group screenshot? Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Who will be taking the picture? Ainin. Okay. Everyone, pose. Okay. Three, two, one. Okay. Berkilat dahi. Okay, bye. Done? Ainin? Okay. Okay, so okay. is there anyone that has something to say to Hakim before we end? Shahi, Aini, Lafza, Sharul, Zul, maybe Zul has a question, <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> I know, I just want to thank Hakim again for 
uh, encouraging us to use ChatGPT. Ini apa? Jangan perasan dek. Jadi, you guys are gonna uh, interview other PR as well. Hmm? Are you guys are going to interview other PR as well? Uh, I think not. Right. Two yeah, more because now. we just need to interview one PR yeah. professional. As, oh, a, as a group, only one. But individually, we have to find a PR for each other. So, yeah. uh, for example, me and Arif uh, will not have the same PR for yes. our individual tasks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Yeah. So I think that's all, everyone. So. All right. So, so thank you for having me. Uh, as your chosen group PR. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, uh, I, 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 I do not bore you guys, but then... Uh, no, 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 no. It's very... It's a pleasure. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Talking to me for an hour. Yes. One hour <laughs> and five minutes. Ten minutes. <laughs> yeah. It's entertaining yep. and education. education. Yeah. Okay, so that's okay. it. Uh, thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.